<laughs> All right, so can we go to Acts 16? Acts chapter 16. And uh, going to talk about a young bloke who features a bit in the New Testament. And um, so just the first three verses of Acts chapter 16. And we're still, continu still continuing on about fathering. Um, but of course, it does, um, you know, it does include sonship. Um, and, um, and we'll get to some of that. <clears throat> uh, but Acts 16, verse 1 to 3, says that Paul came to Derby and Lystra, or Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. And Paul wanted to have him go on with him. So he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. You know, um, <clears throat> these three verses, this little, you know, um, cameo appearance of Timothy here um, is, is not about a young guy who's just a wonderful young guy and, uh, and, and gets to join an apostolic team, you know. And it's not just about a, uh, a guy who, you know, becomes indentured uh, to an apostolic leader. Um, it, this, this, um, this, this story that we've just read, this little cameo is, um, uh, is way bigger than that. And, and it's actually about fathers and sons. Um, cause the, um, the, the first thing it says is that he's a, a certain disciple and that doesn't, doesn't mean that they found him at random or something like that. When it says a certain disciple, it means, um, there was something significant about this young guy. And the commentators tell us that, um, he would have been about 19 years old, you know, so he was at the end of his teenage years, um, but he was a certain kind of disciple. He was, there was something about this young guy, you know, um, and, um, but then the very next two things it says is he was the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. And um, so there's, there's a few things here. This, this young man has grown up in a divided family. And, um, you know, mum's Jewish, father's Greek. Um, mum's Judaistic and father holds to Greek philosophy. Um, and so he, he, he had to make a choice somewhere in his growing up as to which way he was going to go. And, and this is the thing about sonship is that we, we all um, find ourselves somewhere on the line uh, in a position of having to choose when it comes to who our father's going to be <laughs> and, and whose faith we're going to actually adhere to and whose values we are going to follow and, and have embedded in our lives. And, um, and this was the thing with Timothy. Um, he had a father, but his father was nothing like his mother in the sense, not only because it was male and female, but because uh, the Greek philosophy was actually opposed to uh, the Jewish um, religious belief. And, um, you know, um, and, and as a Greek, there were many things uh, about Greek culture that were opposed to uh, Jewish culture. And so this is a pretty interesting dynamic we find here, um, the way Timothy's introduced. So he's got a father, um, but obviously there was division in the family um, because of philosophy, culture, values, etc., beliefs. Uh, and we know he made a certain choice because... Um, in the um, first epistle to uh, Timothy, Paul actually reminds him of his, the, the genuine faith or sincere faith that's in him, which came from his mother and from his grandmother. And so this young guy has grown up with his father's influence, the Greek influence, uh, and he's grown up with his mother and grandmother's influence, their faith in God, their trust in God, uh, their belief uh, in every way, uh, in, you know, in the things of life that was... Um, really diametrically opposed to, to, the, to his father. And so this is the, uh, the context of this story. And this is the environment that uh, Paul actually walked into. Uh, he walked into a place where there was this um, un uniquely prepared disciple, you know, who, who had, uh, he, he had great caliber as a disciple, um, uh, particularly for his age. Um, and then, then Paul discovers that um, it's not because he, he's grown up in a 
wonderful Christian family where everything's united, you know, where they're all in unity and um, there's never been a problem, uh, you know, and never been a conflict in the home. Um, he, he's, he's only, you know, he went to a great church and his whole family went and they sent him off to a great Christian school and he's known nothing else. It's not that kind of environment at all. <laughs> in fact, it's the opposite, you know. And so, um, <clears throat> so we go on and it says, he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. So this is, um, you know, uh, Paul comes to Derby and Lystra, but he finds uh, Timothy obviously in Lystra, but Timothy's got a reputation in his town and region, but also in the next one. And, um, and, and this is pretty interesting. It's a good reputation. And um, I'm guessing that the reputation that he's got is because he's got the faith of his mother and his grandmother, as Paul said in the epistle to Timothy, but also because he made the choice, um, you know, to go God's way, not to go the Greek way. And, um, <clears throat> and as well as that, obviously, um, you know, his faith in God and the, the, the Christ-likeness, in, well, not Christ-likeness, but the godliness in his life, um, the values that he espoused, the, you know, the, 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 the culture that he brought from his uh, mother and grandmother and the way they taught him and brought him up, obviously uh, meant that there was many very good things evident in his life so that the brethren, that is the believers, um, in his town and region plus in the next region, they spoke well of this young man. So he's, he's a significant young man, as uh, you know, around about 19 years old. And then Paul, Paul wants to have him go with him. Now, the context is this, that um, John Mark had, um, uh, you know, gone with Barnabas and Saul uh, on a missionary journey, and then, and then he bailed out on them. And, uh, and then, then uh, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark on the next missionary journey, and Paul said, no, I'm not taking him. And um, uh, in, in my English translation, it says that they had a sharp dispute. So his two fathers, <laughs> who are having a sharp dispute over a young man called John Mark. And um, the dispute was because um, uh, Barnabas is, you know, the, the consoler, the encourager kind of apostle. And so he saw this guy who, who uh, you know, had whatever issues in his life that caused him to bail out of, on them uh, in the middle of a trip. Uh, but he wants to take him again because he wants to be redemptive in this young man's life. Whereas Paul's on a different track. You know, he, he's, um, he's, he's looking for, um, you know, if you read between the lines, you know, in some of these stories, he lo he's looking for someone that he can really believe in uh, and raise up as a son um, to represent him and to represent the father in and through him. And, um, and so Paul sees Timothy and he sees the difference between Timothy and John Mark. He sees the caliber of this young man. He sees the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the lineage. He sees the, the quality in the home, he, despite there being a Greek father. And, um, and he sees the, 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 he hears from all the brethren, that is all the believers and the overseers in these two you know, towns and regions. And uh, so he, he's looking for a replacement for John Mark. And so he wants to, he feels Timothy's the young man. And so then it, then it says an amazing thing. It says he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. This story is about fathers and sons. It's, um, you see, in, Paul, in saying, Paul saying that he wanted to have him go on with him, that means Paul actually wanted to become his spiritual father, and he wanted uh, Timothy to become his spiritual son. And um, obviously mum and grandma didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> right, uh, and obviously all the believers in those regions didn't have a problem with that. Um, but um, there was a bunch of Jews in the region, and um, and of course everybody knew that his father was Greek. And um, and so this is the sticking point. Paul's got to do something so that everybody knows that Timothy's got a new father, and he's a different kind of father. <laughs> so this is not the, um, uh, you know, the debate over circumcision that the um, Jerusalem Council was about. This is about a different thing. This is about the fact that 
Everybody needed to know that, that Paul was now Timothy's father. <laughs> and so, um, and I don't want to be crass tonight, but the, the fact that he circumcised him is incredibly significant um, because this is the process of fathers and sons really coming together. So I said before that um, the things of the Greeks and the things of the Jews were diametrically opposed. And right here in the, in the whole idea of circumcision, we see it. You see, the Greeks did not circumcise. In fact, it was forbidden to circumcise in ancient Greece. Whereas the Jews circumcised for very good reason. And, um, and, and so this, this was the issue. You see, he couldn't become Paul's son and have the mark of something that was opposite to what Paul stood for. So the, the thing about ancient Greece is they actually revered the foreskin. Um, in, in ancient Greece, the, the artists would um, paint the foreskin uh, you know, longer than it actually was and in more detail than it actually was in order to enhance the, the, you know, the, the, the picture they were painting and, and to enhance the, you know, the manhood of the subject they were painting. Uh, and, it, and it was all about pride and arrogance and ego uh, as a Greek man. And so when Paul's circumcising Timothy, this is not just, well, you're, you know, you're becoming part of my apostolic team you know, and, and you're from a Jewish mother anyway, so you should be, uh, should be circumcised. It's not about that at all. This is about him leaving behind the thing that actually was the biggest and most significant mark on his life about his natural father and about his natural father's influence in the family and influence over his life. You see, um, he would have taken over his father's business in the natural. He would have stepped into his, into his father's shoes. He would have um, stepped into his father's circle of influence. His, um, his credibility for his future in Greek society would have come because of the credibility of his father. And the list goes on. And so when Paul circumcised him, he cut off all of those possibilities. And Timothy could never go back from that day. He would never be accepted back into Greek society from that day onwards. So this is an incredibly significant thing because this is basically saying, you know, like, like Jesus said to the, um, in, a, you know, in principle, what Jesus said to the, the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, you know? And yet they said, no, Abraham's our father and God's our father, you know? Um, but there were things about them um, that actually pointed to a different father. <laughs> and Jesus exposed that he and he spoke to it. Uh, and, and it's a similar principle to what we see here that Paul couldn't take Timothy, even though he was a, um, you know, a certain uh, kind of disciple, had a great with certain caliber of young man um, and so on. And, and um, you know, had caught the faith of his mother and grandmother and he was outstanding. And um, uh, the brethren in, in a couple of regions and cities, you know, um, could only say good things about him as a, as a young man of God. And yet... Um, Paul had to demonstrate somehow that his, his Greek background was, would never be part of his future. And, um, and that, that as Timothy's spiritual father, that Timothy couldn't leave him and go back to that life. What an amazing picture this is. All right? And so um, this, is, this is something that um, the kind of thing that is not talked about uh, usually, you know, when people talk about spiritual fathering and also about sonship. Um, but what it means is that um, as sons, our lives um, in some way have got to be marked by our spiritual fathers so that people can see that we don't belong to our past, but we belong to the future walking with this man or this, this woman, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so everybody knew not only that Timothy was um, Timothy's father was a Greek, they also uh, no, they also knew that he was no longer Greek, and and that he had actually um, had um, you know cut off from his life everything to do with that opposing ideology, that opposing lifestyle, 
those opposing values, uh, that opposing culture, and, and also the, the pride and arrogance that went along with not being circumcised in Greek, Greek culture, all of that had been cut away from his life and he could never go back there. And right here is an incredible picture of actually what it means for sons to connect with the spiritual father. <laughs> it starts with our, our heavenly father, actually, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it's a, it's, it's a spiritual father who actually takes the steps to say, well, okay, th th in a sense, well, this has got to go. And this has got to go. And this has got to go. <laughs> and while it's not usually said like that, in the journey together, it becomes obvious that to go the whole journey, think some, there's things that can, cannot be a part of that journey together. Because they're not part of the journey with the Heavenly Father, ultimately. And so therefore, they're not part of the journey when we fully connect with a, a spiritual father. And so, this is, like I said, this is not just about Timothy joining an apostolic team. It's also not, not even just about him you know, being indentured, if you will, you know, to another man. Um, this is far bigger than this. Paul actually became his father. And he could not go back to Greek culture. So in, in a sense, he was, um, this was a, a complete dividing line for his life. He would never be the same again. His life would never be the same again. But he was totally set free from the pride and arrogance, you know, that was in Greek males. He was totally set free, um, you know, from their, their values and opposed um, godly values. He was totally set free from, um, you know, from the things that are opposite to godliness. He was totally set free from the pull of um, Greek culture, but also from the pull perhaps of his father's wealth or status or um, reputation or any of those things in Greek culture. He was totally set free from those things. So there was no impediment and nothing to drag him back away from fulfilling the call of God upon his life. And uh, that, that's what this story is all about. And so we've, we've looked at this week at, um, um, you know, at, at sons who have lameness. And, um, you know, Mephibosheth, his lameness actually uh, remained all his life, even though he ate at the king's table. And he had access to the king's dining room, you know. Um, and he was like one of the king's sons. Um, we look at, looked last night at the, um, you know, what, who's called the prodigal son, you know. And the father of the prodigal son, what he did in, in how he welcomed his son back and what he did, you know, in clothing him and having the feast and so on was actually not just restoring him uh, back into the family, but it was healing the lameness in his, in his life because of his orphan spirit. But then the older son, the way he arced up as well, this, when the father spoke to him, he was actually want, trying to heal the lameness that he also had because he carried the orphan spirit. And what we see here is Paul's actually uh, putting something into place that means that the orphan spirit can never take uh, drag Timothy back again. <laughs> Isn't that an awesome picture? You know, uh, he could never be tempted uh, ever again uh, to make a decision between his natural father who was Greek and his mother and grandmother because all of that was cut off and it could never be part of his life again. And, um, and like I said, uh, having been circumcised, he would not be accepted back into Greek culture. <laughs> so, so this was you know, a very serious watershed moment for Timothy. This was an all or nothing moment. Um, th this was... Um, I'm going forward and, and I cannot go back. It will never happen. <laughs> and so the, the connection between fathers and sons always has a basis. There's always, you know, fathers um, want to father sons because they see something in them. They see something of God in them. They see uh, the, the deposit of God. They, they, they sense a grace about their lives or it's just a divine connection. Um, and only God can do that. And, um, and so obviously, you know, Paul meets this young guy and some, something in, of that order um, transpires, but then there's some issues to deal with. And it's not because there's anything wrong with Timothy. It's because um, for sons and fathers to go the journey together, uh, actually there can't be a back door. 
<laughs> That's a wild thought, eh? <laughs> you know, you can't hold up the sign that says exit stage left, you know? <laughs> There's no off-ramp on this journey. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is foreign in our society. It's foreign, you know? And, and, um, and we all have many reasons to um, be apprehensive about what I'm talking about now, about this principle, or even to fear the possibilities of what might happen, you know? Uh, and who, he doesn't say what happened with Timothy uh, in the process, but I can tell you this. Out of all of Paul, the Apostle Paul's sons, there came a time when Paul said, I'm sending Timothy to you because I have no one else who is like-minded. And Paul had a lot of great spiritual sons. Yeah, he left Titus in Crete, you know, to, to do what he would do himself if he stayed. He sent many other of his sons to, to different places for different purposes to go and minister, you know, to the churches in cities and regions. Um, but he never said this about anybody else. It was only Timothy that he said, I'm sending Timothy to you because I have no one else who is as like-minded as Timothy is. I have no one else who is as much like me as Timothy is. <laughs> I have no one else who is his father's son to the extent that Timothy has become. What an amazing thing. And um, uh, I am going to begin to talk about sons because um, most of what, what I have found in the New Testament about sonship is actually to do with Paul and Timothy. <laughs> um, but this is where it starts. You see, this wasn't just about, uh, uh, well, Paul wasn't on a recruitment drive, <laughs> right? Um, he, but he, he did um, have a space in his heart for somebody because John Mark was no longer with him. And, um, and so he, he saw this young man who, who, and obviously there was a connection in the spirit, um, but the issue was, uh, was Paul going to be completely his father or not? And, would it, and everybody needed to know who his father was, not the Greek one. <laughs> yeah. And so what it means to us is that, um, you know, ultimately fathers raise the best sons, if you will. Spiritual fathers raise the, their greatest spiritual sons where there's a complete cutting off of the past and the complete cutting off of all other ideologies and values and, and everything else, uh, and, and where the, the door to go, you know, the, the option of going back does not exist anymore, then there, there is nothing else except uh, to become the, you know, the greatest son that a person can become. And um, so, so there's nothing to inhibit the process. There's nothing to drag the son back. There's nothing to tempt the son away anymore. And, but also the interesting thing about this situation is it wasn't only Paul who became his father, but he became part of a, uh, an apostolic team, which was full of sons and fathers. And um, uh, historically, we're told that Paul traveled with a dozen to 15 people. That was the size of his team. And so um, Paul had many influences. But, you know, uh, sorry, um, Timothy had many influences. But, of course, Paul says things like, you know, um, you, you know, what, what's been tra transferred into his life, you know, um, you know, through the, through the prophecy of uh, prophecies over his life and through the laying on of hands of the elders and, and also through what Paul's poured into his life. He had many influences into his life to shape him as a son, but it started here where everything that was not about him being a son under Paul uh, and under the father uh, being totally cut off from his life so that there was nothing else except to become the greatest spiritual son he could become and to fulfill the destiny God had for him. And um, so um, sorry for those of you who are looking for a gentle Jesus, meek and mild message tonight. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the truth is that this is real freedom. This is liberty, you know, because whatever we've got a back door, um, that we, we will have conflict from time to time in our hearts. While ever we've got a back door, we, we can be tempted, you know. Um, while ever we've got a back door, we've got options, and that can, they can be distractions, you know. And, and it's the same in our walk with our Heavenly Father. Um, you know, we, we can't have a back door. You know, it's all or nothing in this walk with God. Um, 
But, you know, because it's about the, our walk with God is about him being our father and we're his son, we can see here the same principle between a spiritual father and a spiritual son. This is actually what Paul did. He actually closed and locked and sealed up the back door so that Timothy had nowhere to go except to become the son he was destined to be. And, um, and what a son he became, my goodness. You know, hi history tells us that when Paul sent him to be the, um, the apostle over the church in Ephesus city and surrounding region, he was 26 years old. So in seven years, this is, this is how, how much it developed. But also history tells us that in Ephesus city and region, there was either um, 6,000 house churches or 60,000. <laughs> so I don't know why there's the discrepancy or the uh, lack of clarity, but let, let's, just, um, let's just say that he oversees 6,000 house churches. Let's say there's an average of 20 people in each house church. <laughs> He's 26 years old. Look at the caliber of son he became. And then, the, then at 26 years old, he becomes a father over a multitude of believers in Ephesus city and, and region. But it was because there was no back door. <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, and it doesn't tell us anything more about his natural family um, because um, that's irrelevant now. Paul does talk to him about the faith of his mother and his grandmother. So that, that foundation from his growing up, the her that was his heritage, that, that um, his, his life as, as a son of the heavenly father and as Paul, his spiritual father, was built upon. Um, but his, his Greek father is never mentioned again in the, in the word of God as far as I know. And the reason is because he was no longer his father. Paul was his father. And so whatever um, influences we've had uh, previously, um, you know, they can't influence us uh, into the future with a spiritual father because a spiritual father is to pass on what the heavenly father has put in them and nothing else. Yeah. So this is not about control. Uh, it's not about... Um, you know, a, um, a commune or a closed community, you know, where, where the spiritual father's a demigod. We're not talking about any of that kind of stuff. We're talking about a principle um, here where, where e everything that could be a problem in our future gets cut off. And it's things that are opposed to the ways of God. Things that are opposed to, to Jesus being king and Lord, you know. Uh, things that could muddy the waters in our walk with our heavenly father and with the spiritual father. It's, um, it's the things that, um, you know, that could cause conflict in our own hearts or be a distraction in our minds. Um, we, we can only have one set of values, and that's the values of our Heavenly Father, and that's what our earthly fathers must demonstrate and espouse to us. We, we can only have one culture, and that's the culture of our King. We, we, can, we can only have one heart, and that's the heart of our Heavenly Father, and that's what our earthly father, uh, spiritual fathers have got to transmit to us as well. Uh, and the list goes on. And so there's no room for anything else, which is why we see here Paul circumcises him and he delivers him from everything that uh, was Greek and that was opposed to the things of God and that could be a problem in his future as a son. And so he was free completely to be able to become the son that he was destined to be. And uh, what an awesome picture that is. So... Um, I might leave it there tonight, so why don't we pray, shall we?